The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Afternoon, everybody. I hope everybody can hear me okay. We'll get started in about a minute. Okay, so let's get started um, on today's webinar on how to utilize or create property websites using your free member benefit called OC, or I'm sorry, using your free member benefit called RELA. Um, just a quick introduction for those of you who don't know who I am. My name's Anthony. I work here at Orange County Realtors. Been here now over 16 years. Started off in the MLS department, so guaranteed. Um, I'll speak to you at least at one point in time in your career regarding rules, regulations, violations, all that fun stuff. What I'm also involved with is our outreach program. Our outreach program is designed to give you training on all your various tools and products. So not only do I train on MLS, but uh, how to add and modify listings, how to run searches, um, how to create uh, CMAs, things like that. But I also train on zip forms. So if you were here on my earlier class uh, this morning, uh, we went over some zip forms, advanced tools and tricks, so I hope you enjoyed that. To what um, I also train on, which is the mobile tablet devices and all the third party member benefits that Orange County Realtors, CRMLS, and NAR and CAR offer to you. So, with that said, let's go over what is RELA. Now, RELA is a again a free member benefit offered to you for being a car or i'm sorry an orange county realtors member and what this allows you to do is create property websites now why would anyone want to create a property website well one of the many things that you are now able to do and maybe one of the things that you as an agent especially representing a listing want to be able to better market a home or, or market a property and one of the many things that you are promising or you can promise to a client is better marketing and one of the many tools to do that is to create your own property website now I know with many agents that have dealt with doing property websites in the past they've usually hired someone else to actually create a property website for them and usually those property websites take anywhere from you know three or four days up to two weeks depending on uh, your vendor now I don't know about you guys but in today's market where property is vital where to have that marketing ready to go you want to have that property website ready to go really quickly and instead of waiting a couple of days or a week or two weeks to have that property website done Rela allows you the agent to be able to create your own property websites in less than five minutes now if you go to relahq.com front slash OCR sign up for your free account now your free account will allow you to create as many property websites as you want but you can have up to three active property websites meaning published websites um, at any given time so I could have a thousand different property websites that I've been a listing agent on but as long as only no more than three are active this product is going to be free now if I was a member or member of a different association I can tell you that right away their price point says that an agent or a person has to pay $25 a month to have just one property website or one active property website so right away for being an Orange County member you're getting a huge discount in the number of active websites that you can have at any given time now they do have other paid plans to allow you to have more active property websites but honestly you know you don't necessarily need them until you start getting more and more listings so what you want to do as an agent first and foremost go to the website www dot r e l a h is and harry q is and quit dot com front slash o c r once you go there 
This is the landing page platform for Orange County Realtors. From here, you're going to input your first name, your last name, put in your email address, create a password for yourself for this website, and then most importantly, put in your OC member ID. Now, your OC member ID is the same member ID that you use for the MLS. So, if you're an Orange County member, your ID should begin with OC, then typically followed by the first four letters of your last name, followed by the first three letters of your first. That is your user ID for the MLS. Now, depending on how long you've been a member, sometimes if you've been an old-time member or, or more seasoned member, maybe your user ID begins with S, the letter D, or in some cases the letter I, and then again, the first four letters of your last name followed by the first three letters of your first. Okay. Once you put in your first name, last name, email address, create a password, and your user ID for the MLS, you're going to hit create an account. Once you've created your account, you're now able to create property websites. So the goal of this webinar is to show you how easy it is to make a property website, and I'm going to show you some of the bells and whistles that you can add into a property website to make it beautiful, um, to display all your photos, all your videos, and how this ties into your Facebook marketing. So, are there any questions before we get started? No questions? Excellent. So, if you've been to the website and you've created your property website, now all we're going to do is log in. So, I'm going to show you in five easy steps how to make a property website in less than five minutes. So, step one to make a property website, after you log in, come over to the top right corner and click on Add a Property. When you click on Add a Property, you're now going to put in the property's address. Now, I recommend that you be the listing agent or at least the co-listing agent on the listing. Okay? As we all know, Code of Ethics and MLS rules say that we're not allowed to market a property unless we're the listing agent or the co-listing agent of that listing. So please do not just randomly put in someone else's or another agent's listing to create a property website. Because once you've published the website, it goes active out to the web and this will give the impression that you're the listing agent. No one attending today's webinar wants to give that impression, I hope. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put in the property's address uh, actually, let's do this one. Put in the city. Then when I say add a property, step two, Relug actually goes and searches the entire internet for property information about this property, anything that was ever published in the past or currently being published through MLS. From here, step two, we're going to fill in the details page. The details page, we're going to make sure that the property address shows correct. Here, the property description, you'll notice that the property description has been pre-filled in. This is public information that was found on various different websites that RELA has automatically scraped for you. So here what we can do is reword our property description. Now, I know most of us in our MLS system understand that the property description only allows us to describe the aesthetics of the home, right? Beautiful, two-bed, three-bath, home under 900K, right? Kind of thing. Or at the end of the cul-de-sac. So here what we can do is rewrite the property description if we choose. So what I would probably recommend, you know, is put in everything else that you want to put in in your property description. Now I will say that you do not need to put in your name, your email address, your phone numbers, or anything like that because, again, this is going to be your property website. Now from the property description, what type of property is this? Single family, duplex, triplex, quadplex? condo, co-op, mobile home, multi, 
family, timeshare, townhome, other. Now, I like the other choice here because maybe this is a commercial or a business opportunity. Or maybe this is a rental and it's up for lease. Just simply select other and now type in what it is. So what you can now do is afford yourself the, the flexibility to create not just for sale residential properties, but now you can now hit the entire gambit of properties that, you're, that you are the listing agent on. So whether it's your leases or sales, commercial or residential, you can now create a property website that, again, you're the listing agent on. From here... We choose our list price or put in our list price. Now the display price, you can put in a different price to be displayed, but why would you ever change a price outside of what you have currently listed on your contract? Put in your year bill. You can put in your bedrooms, your bathrooms. You can even do the square footage. And of course the lot size. How many stories? The garage, if it's attached, detached, or none, or other. And of course, if there are extra parking spaces or a carport. Now, that's all here on the right hand side. On the left hand side, we talk about the amenities. Down below, we have a set of pre created amenities for you. To get an amenity or to select an amenity, just simply click on the amenity to add it. So maybe it's got a community pool, city lights view, hardwood floors, heated floors, um, open floor plan, oversized windows, quartz countertops, quiet and private. But wait a minute, maybe there's something not here on this list that I need to make sure that people see about this property. Well, Click in the amenities box and simply type in your amenities and hit a tab. So maybe, um, let's see, senior, li uh, senior community, uh, 55 plus, um, what else would be good? Oh, um, under stairs. Wine storage, and oh, I don't know, something else that's fun. Greenbelt view, and tennis court access. So here what we can now do is type in all of the amenities that are related to our property. Okay, now after we type in our details, most importantly at this point in the upper right hand corner, we're going to save our information. If we jump to something else and we haven't hit save here on the details, all this information will be removed or deleted. So always hit save, and I'll say that again, always hit save before leaving the details page. Now, from here, we've got the website. We're creating the website, so we put in the address. Step two, we put in the property details. Step three, we go to the photo gallery to upload our photos. Now, what I love about this compared to, say, MLS, as most of us know, putting in listings in the MLS system, that MLS allows you up to 75 photos on a property. Each photo size can be, not, or can be no larger than six megabytes. Now, in some cases, you have photographers or professional photographers that are taking really high definition photography and unfortunately they have to shrink those photos down or make them smaller sizes in order for us to be able to upload them into the MLS. Well the nice thing about your own property website, two things actually, number one you do not need to have or there is no limit so you can have all 300 photos that my that your photographer has taken for this property uploaded as part of your property website. Two, there is no size limitation to the photos. So those high definition, crisp, clear photos that your photographer takes with that, you know, 
78 megapixel camera of theirs, you can upload those 78 megapixel photos. So, how we upload a photo to our website, click on Add Photos here under the Photo Gallery. Now we're going to browse our computer for those photos. Now, to upload photos, we can select one at a time or simply select the first photo on your computer, then go down to the last photo on your computer, and then I'm going to hit Open. Now, all those photos, all 20-some photos that I just selected, are now being uploaded as part of the property website. Now, you'll notice, or you probably have noticed, that I selected the photos, and they were already set in a set order. Now, we want to, here on the property website, to display certain photos first, second, third, fourth, right? And if we come down below here on the photo gallery, we can actually, just with a click of a mouse, Click and hold our mouse down, drag a photo, and move it. So again, here we can put our photos in whatever order we want. Just like so. We can even type in a very simple description. Okay, so here we upload all of those photos. Step three, we can come down below here on the left-hand side to themes and contacts. Theme and contact is basically our contact information and the theme of the website that we want to choose. Now we are defaulted into a generic theme that Rila has to offer. How do I know what this theme looks like? Well, over here to the right is the preview of the actual property website. Very simply, we can scroll right on through the property website under this current theme to see what the home or what this property website currently looks like. Well, if you don't like this theme, because maybe it doesn't match what you envision as a property website, not a problem. Click on Change Theme, and now Rila. as it processes, gives you 12 different property websites to choose from, or 12 different templates to choose from, okay? Simply, if you wanna look at what that theme looks like or what that website would look like, simply click on that theme. Now the property website is reconfigured, and now you can see how this website is displayed. Now, underneath the theme, Logo, this is where we're going to make sure that we upload our company logo. So hopefully your company, whoever you work for, actually gives you access to your company logo. Download it onto your computer and then simply, very first time you make a property website, browse your computer for that logo. And let me see if I have a current one, which I don't have the current. Oh, there we go. There we go. And then I'm going to hit save. And there we go. There's the prop, my office logo right there. Down below, under contact, we need to input our contact information, how we want to be contacted by people who come to our property website. So the very first time, click on Edit under Contacts. Now from here, we're going to add a photo. Make sure it's an updated photo of yourself. If you haven't had one done, maybe you need to uh, find a photographer that will actually do a really good professional photo of you. Next, make sure that your first name, last name, your email address, your phone number, your company, your DRE license number, and even your own personal website is referenced. Down below, you can also reference your social media portals to be contacted at as well. Just simply put in, say, as an example, your Facebook business page.
And then, of course, maybe you have a LinkedIn account or a Twitter account. Then you're going to hit Save Contact. So here we've gone through four easy steps. Step one, put in the property address. Step two, put in the details. Step three, the photo gallery. Step four, the theme and contacts. Now at this point, all you need to do, step five, come up over to the top left corner and click on the not published and switch it to published. The moment you put it to published, your website is now publicly found on the internet. Okay, so here down below it gives you what the property, property website is. Okay, so here we can now take this property website and begin to share it to the entire world. So now we'll put it on our marketing, our flyers, our Facebook business page, things like that. Are there any questions on how we can create a property website. Looks pretty simple, right? Come on. Don't know why all of a sudden it's locked up on me here. Are there any questions at all so far? All right. So we created that property website in about 20 minutes. And that's only because I went over and explained everything. Okay. Now just real quickly. Which is what I love about this system sometimes. There we go. Now at this point, we've got some other cool bells and whistles that we can, hmm, guess I'm running into some glitches here. Sorry about that, folks. I'll handle that. So there's some other fun bells and whistles here after we create the property website and we've published it that we can also do. Now back here, we'll go back to edit the property and we're going to start with the details. Um, here we went over pretty much all the details, anything that I modify, like maybe I need to change the list price on the property, what have you. If I lower the price on a property, I can come into my property website, modify it. Here at the details, always hit uh, save. Now. Another uh, bell and whistle, part of the gravy program. And what I mean by gravy, part of the free service. Yes, back here on the photos, we have all the photos. But maybe I want my photos to run as a movie. So maybe I didn't get a virtual tour done or I didn't um, get a video created. Well, back here from the photo gallery, I can come over here to the gallery options on the property website. When I go to the gallery options, I can now come over to where it says virtual tour, which is defaulted to off. If I click on, now I'm going to be taken into the virtual tour configuration, where now I'm going to change the status from off to enable. Now what I'm done, or what I've done, is I've taken all the photos and I've made it into a movie style projection as you see here now when we hit save and close now I've taken all those single pictures and made them into a video now speaking of video there is a videos and virtual tours section now your videos and virtual tours very similar to your photo gallery you are unlimited to the amount of videos and virtual tour, um, virtual tours that you can add. Now there is a distinction between the two. A video is basically a movie that you can either upload directly or add in the link. 
whereas a virtual tour is typically like the link or the 3D tours that some agents are able to now do with their photographers. And I'll demonstrate those two in a second, or demonstrate that one in a second. So here, maybe I have a video. And instead of just a video of the house, I'm going to upload several other videos. One video that I may upload will be my introductory video. So who I am in the business, working for ABC Real Estate. So I have a video, a two-minute video done for my marketing that's on YouTube, introducing Anthony to the real estate world. So what I can do is upload that video. Besides that video, maybe I do a community video. This, you know, was it, what's, what's it like to live in the Laguna Hills community? So I do a quick little video highlighting some of the big features and restaurants and amenities in the Laguna Hills community. And maybe I have, you know, an aerial video that my photographer has done with their quadcopter or whatever. Very easy. We can come over here to where it says add a video. Here I can upload a video from YouTube or if I made the video myself, upload that video directly from the computer. Uh, let's go with uh, video instructions. Let's just upload a fun one here. There it goes. Takes just a few seconds to upload a two minute video. And then we're gonna see the little cover image here right underneath. So that's uploading a video or videos. Virtual tours at the top here. Your virtual tours will be like your 3D tours. Now this is something that's really taking your business by storm. I'm sure most of us attending today's webinar have heard of a product called Matterport. Now for those of you who don't know what Matterport is, Matterport is a specialized or is a company that has a specialized camera that actually takes a full 360 degree picture of any room in the house. All you got to do is set up the camera and the camera spins around and takes this virtual model that you can now place together and have an actual virtual tour of the house. Now why is something like this so amazing in your business nowadays? Well, this allows the consumer to actually virtually be in the house without having to have you open up the house to get them in. So if you have clients that are international or across the nation, this is a great way of being able to present or have them go through the house without them actually physically being here. So if I upload a virtual tour in this sense, and I'm going to take this demo Matterport link. I'm going to place that in the tour section here and we upload that tour. We now uploaded this virtual 3D tour of the house and if anybody has never been through one of these before, I'm just going to play this super quickly. So here we play the 3D tour of the house. Here is a full model of the house on that floor. And now if you have those 3D goggles, I can now look around the entire room. So here we're at the front door. Maybe I want to go into this room over here. What's this room like? Oh, there's, an, there's a bedroom slash office right here. That looks great. Oh, look, let's turn around. Let's leave this room. So people with those 3D goggles nowadays can literally walk through an entire house to get the feel. So now you as an agent, instead of showing 30 or 40 or 50 homes, now might only show five or six homes to a client because now that client who's actually been through this house only wants to come see the actual house they want to make an offer on just to make sure that they get the right feel for it. So I think these types of tours nowadays are amazing for your business. And I think it just adds an, an extra air of professionalism to go through that. So there you go. Um, so if you haven't thought about, about doing one like this, ask your photographer if they do something like this. 
Um, that way you can display it. So there, we've got the virtual tours. Now, another thing that you might want to add to your website, music. Here, Rila gives you 12 different pieces of music for your website. These are all considered duty-free music that you can actually utilize for your website. Simply, if you want to listen to what a song sounds like, just simply click the play button. And I'm hoping that everybody can hear this. You hear the music, right? So here what you can now do, once you find the song that you like, simply click Add. Once you hit Add, now that song has been added to your website. So just to look at it, we go over to Themes and Contacts super quickly. And here in the Preview section, off to the right, here's the website. You'll notice that in the background, we'll lower the music just a bit. Here in the background, we notice that there's the virtual tour playing in the background on the website that we picked. We can come down below, see our photos. Oh, there's a section for our video and our virtual tour, right? So we can click on the virtual tour or the video. And when we hit play, we can now go through and play the video. Right now, besides music, docs and floor plans, you can upload actual PDF style files or Word files to your website. So, agents, if you are doing a lease website, which um, say you're you're the list, listing agent on a property, now all of a sudden. For that lease, you can create the property website, and now part of your property website, you can upload, say, the application to rent or the um, a list of the requirements to be considered as a tenant for that for that property. So maybe I go into Zip Forms, I do the application to rent where I can at least fill out the property address. Now I can save it as a PDF document onto my computer. And then I can upload it to my property website for anyone to be able to download and fill out to send to me. Okay? So that's kind of a cool thing here for the docs. Um, real quickly, under the domains, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, just by publishing, you're automatically created a generic or a default domain name for the property website. Typically, it's the address of the property, dot .rela dot, um, relahq.com, um, because that's who's actually hosting it. So there's no charge for you to actually make a domain name. Now, some of you may have already purchased a domain name. Okay, not a problem. Uh, you can actually search your domain name or upload it yourself, and they will tie that domain name to the property website. Or maybe you don't like this at all. Now you can add a custom domain name, which by, at that point, a custom domain name may cost you about $15 to create. Okay? Um, let's see here. We're going to preview what the website looks like. By the way, are there any questions whatsoever or anything, any questions so far? As we're viewing the property website, here we've got our logo in the co corner. We got the address. We've got some tools here based on the theme. There's the off, uh, list price. Now, anybody going or finding this property on the on a search or clicked on any links that we've added in, and by the way, you can take this link for the property website and put it into your MLS. Put it under the agent remarks or under the syndication remarks in your listing. And if you don't know where the syndication remarks is, when you write a property description in a listing, 
underneath the property description, there's a box called syndication remarks. That area is where you can put in property website or websites, uh, email addresses, phone numbers, things like that on top of a property description. Um, but most importantly, this property website, when a lead or a potential lead comes to this website, they see your information. Down below, if they want to get in touch with you, they just put in their information here. First name, last name, email address, and phone number, or first name, last name, and phone. And the moment they hit send inquiry, within about two minutes, an email is generated to you telling you, the agent, that a person has uh, subscribed or want to know about this address. Okay? So that does that really quickly and you capture the lead. No one else sees this lead other than you. So the leads come directly to you, okay? All right, um, let's see here. A couple of other things after we do this. Um, another nice bell and whistle. We created the property website. We create the property website. At this point, we can also create brochures. I know one thing that agents really want want to be able to do is to create flyers for an open house, or maybe uh, this is a multi-million dollar house and they want to make those four page cover um, booklets. And a lot of times you're asking a marketing team to do this for you. And that can be really costly, really quick, right? Well, with Rila, being an Orange County member, creating your property website, Rila has taken upon themselves to give you templates to choose. Now these templates, or the uh, creating your brochures or flyers or whatever, uh, even postcards, these are high definition PDF files. And way different than say, creating a flyer on Cloud CMA. Cloud CMA, their flyers are really nice, but they're not high definition PDFs. So if I were to send it to a printer, I'm going to see a lot of grainy material, right? Well, here, these are going to be high definition, so they're going to be really crisp and clear if I were to send these files to a, to a printer to print out my flyers. Now, really quickly, each of these are, have several different templates that we can choose from. If I click on flyers, I'm given one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different flyers to choose from that I can modify and edit. So what's super cool is just simply select a flyer, click on the down arrow and say use this design. Now these flyers or any of these brochures are fully editable. So maybe when I click on the hourglass, maybe I want to be a little bit more wordy. So now I can just click in the box and begin to type in my extra words on my flyer. Or maybe I want to add in another image. Maybe, oh, I don't know, I need to add in a photo of myself here. So now I'm going to click on add an image. And now I can upload a new image. Uh, let's see here, where is it? Oh, there it is. And now I can click on it, drag it, resize it. And maybe I want to crop this one. So now I'm going to crop it. Confirm. And place it on where I want it to go. So I can now fully edit what I want, right? So I can do that. I can even add in extra text boxes. So maybe I'm going to add in a text box. It's going to be totally bolded. And I'm going to say in this text box, just listed. And now maybe I bold it and I change it from black to a different color. 
So I want it to be red and let's say OK. And the font size, we want it really big. So here I can really do what I want to do on that flyer. And by the way, at this point, after I make my flyer and doing what I want to do, I can save it, I can download it, I can close it. I do believe that we can do all that fun stuff. So here we can hit download. Now I can download my flyer onto my computer and email it to my printer. Here's a flyer I, I, I created. Please print it for my open house tomorrow. Or, let's see here. Besides flyers, we have brochures. So, I know a lot of agents who have been to properties out in, say, Laguna, uh, Laguna Beach or Newport Beach, and those are those oceanfront properties that some of those agents do, those beautiful four-page brochures about the home. Well, guess what? Here under the brochure section, these are all, you've got one, two, three, four different templates of four-page brochures. So here we can click on that template just to demonstrate this one real quickly. And here are all four pages that I can now modify from beginning to end. Again, customizing my images. So maybe I don't like that image, so I want to change that image. And now here, oh, I don't know, let's let's add in the, the wine cellar or the wine thing here. So we can now go around and totally customize everything about this brochure. And again, I have the capability of downloading it, sending it to my printer, and now I have a front back glossy four page uh, brochure. Um, let's see here, social media posts. I know a lot of us like to do just a listed social media post. Excuse me, here on the social media, we can create a, we have two template styles for making a very simplified social media post. And of course, the last one that you will really like is creating postcards. Here you got two just listed and one just sold. But why limit it to yourself to just listed and just sold? Maybe in this one, I went into escrow. So now I can modify, oh, and by the way, this is a front and back postcard. You'll notice here's the front of the postcard, here's the back of the postcard, so that I can send it off to my EDM and they can place the address on this postcard for me. But maybe now I go uh, in escrow. At that point. So again, we can create these documents super quickly and easily. So, are there any questions about creating a brochure or creating a flyer? Are there any questions at all? Looks pretty easy. Mark, Sherry, Jacqueline, you guys enjoying it? All right. Awesome. So, last thing that we'll go over today is how do we market the property? or how do we market the property website? So besides doing your flyers, your postcards, which by the way, on the postcard, on those flyers, it will have the property website for you already placed there. So at least it starts to get the word out about this property website. But anybody here uh, have a Facebook business page? I'm, I'm going to assume most of you attending today do. Now, I'm sure those of you with a Facebook business page has probably at some point in time tried either creating a Facebook ad, right? And usually creating a Facebook ad, maybe the first couple of times, if you're not familiar with doing that, can be a little cumbersome. It probably takes you anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes to make an actual ad. 
from scratch to finish, from designing the flyer or designing the ad to picking your demographics, then how long you run the ad versus how much you want to spend, all that, right? Well, one of the benefits about Rila is that they automatically partner up with Facebook business. What they want to do or what they allow you to do is that after you create your account and you create a property website, oh, thanks, Mark, um, um, in creating a property website, it asks or it will ask you if you have a Facebook business page. If you do, then you can start to create Facebook business ads. Now, this is where I'm going to jump over into a video just to be able to show you, and I'm not going to play the video necessarily from start to finish, but I'm just going to show you some really quick, interesting things about the targeted ad. So here we make the targeted ad, or actually, let's play that. So here, after we create the property website, we now want to make a targeted ad for this website and we want to post it or it's going to be posted through Facebook uh, business ads. So from here at the overview section of your property website, you're going to click on get started next to Facebook ads. Once you click on get started, you're going to be taken to a section just like so, whereby in this section you can um, Say how much you're budgeting first and foremost. So let's see here. We're going to close that out. Over here to the left, your budget. So you have to run your ad for how long? So maybe you pick a week or two weeks. The budget, how much money you want to spend. Now, according to the updated um, website, this fee went from $6 to $7 per day. So that means that you have to run your ad for so many days um, already. So I do believe $6 per day for, for $49 is bare minimum. So you have to at least spend $49, meaning you have to run at least a seven-day ad. Okay, But maybe you come over here and you say, I don't want to spend any more than $100, maybe for a two-week ad. Once you pick out your budget and your time frame to run the ad over here towards the right what type of audience do you want to try to get so this person here is actually saying how long they want to run the ad how much they want to spend then over here do they want to capture leads or do they just want people to go to the property website just to generate views typically you as an agent want to generate a lead under the lead generation who are you trying to attract Buyers, agents, lenders, or investors. Typically, you're trying to, uh, this ad is trying to generate a buyer, right? Underneath generating the buyer or the type of uh, lead you want to get, who do you want to market to? Here you can market to just men, women, or everyone. You can even pick out an age demographic. Now, the age demographic, you know, be realistic. Who is actually going to be able to buy the property that you're trying to market, right? Who's got that type of money kind of thing? Think about that. Now, uh, or maybe it's a particular um, community that's 55 or older. So maybe you need to, you know, you're not going to market it anybody under 55. So maybe you want to choose 55 or older. Oh, Mark, you have a quick question here. During the website creation, was there a way to add voiceover for the virtual tour? If the actual virtual tour itself had a voiceover in the video, then that would automatically be there. So no, an, an automatic voice is never automatically done on any virtual tour unless the, the tour itself was created with one. Does that make sense? So if I'm putting together my own virtual tour or my own video about the property, then I'm going to narrate it or voice over it myself, if that makes sense. If I didn't do that voiceover and I published that video, then that vo video would, would just have whatever music is in that video that I posted, or it would be just blank. Does that make sense? 
All right. Oops. So here, uh, back to the age. Maybe if it's a 55 or older community, you make the age 55 plus. Um, most importantly, down below under location. So who are you trying to target? Now you have two ways of doing this. One is search um, closest to the property or distance from the property. So you can actually say, I want to market or have this targeted ad hit anyone within 50 miles of a 50 mile radius of this property. That is between 24 and 50, both men and women who are looking to buy a home, right? Or underneath this choice, under location, uh, besides location radius, uh, I can go from radius of property or I can say cities or zip codes. Now the cities or zip codes are big because Facebook advertising markets out to more than 2 billion people worldwide. You can now start to type in the multiple cities in multiple different areas or regions across the world. So if you um, uh, have this community, and I was just helping a gentleman the other day with this, he has a home in Laguna Woods, and he wanted to market it out to people in Chicago and New York and Florida. He started typing in all the cities in New York, so New York, New York, um, Corning, New York, Chicago, Illinois, Tampa Bay, Florida. You could type all those cities in if you choose. Not, not just that. You could also choose other cities within California. So who do you want realistically to get leads from, from what areas? I would say more than likely, in a lot of cases, you're probably going to try to target people that are in different areas that may want to move locally. They may want to move to this city. Okay. Now, once you pick that and you hit next down below, Now your ad is created. Now, just like the flyers and the brochures and the postcards, this particular ad is fully editable. So all you need to do, click on edit text, edit images, upload a video. Now you can fully customize this particular ad. But Rila has gone out of their way to actually take most of that creation process on themselves. So they do have the front of front picture of the website. They will actually have not real sites, but the property website address here. Here at the very top where it says enter personalized message, you can write in your message down below. Typically, if this is a just listed property, it'll say that with some of the amenities, this, that, and the other. Everything on this ad is fully customizable. Now, there is one thing I would like to make sure that everybody is warned about. DRE last year informed all of the California realtors that they are enforcing first point of contact rules. Now, we all know that our first point of contact rules goes beyond our post our our um, our postcards and our business cards, right? Like your for sale signs got to have your DRE license number plus your company logo or at least the company name, this, that, and the other, right, on top of what our name is. Well, last year or late last year, because of the um, the commissioner, he had informed our members at the MLS committee or MLS forum that even social media postings that are trying to solicit business, basically any agent posting onto their Facebook business page, must meet all first point of contact information on every post not just on the not on not just on the business page itself but on every post that they put out so if it's a posting to your wall if it's a facebook ad um or anything like that you must have all first point of contact information so with that said I would say under the enter your personalized message at the top, make sure that you at least have 
because this will have uh, your name or at least have your name, your company, and your DRE license number in this message. You're going to be limited in space, right? So you're going to be needing to be really super creative about this, but for this ad, that's what you should do at the top of that message. Make sure that your information and your phone number, or uh, not necessarily your phone number, but your company name and your DRE license number are in this post. If not, DRE could send you very easily a very quick fine because they are monitoring every agent's uh, social media postings. So you need to be careful of that. Okay. Now, by the way, after you put this ad together and you hit next, we're just going to jump through here real quick. It's going to give me a really quick review of my ad. It's going to tell me how much I set aside for my budget, how long I'm running it, what the objective of this ad is going to try to get, and then at the end of the day, I'm going to hit publish my ad. The moment I hit publish my ad, based on this algorithm plus some other algorithms that are running behind the scenes, now this ad will now start to appear on people's news feeds, just like so. Now, there's a couple of things from here. Once something like this appears, okay, the person that this go, this ad has gone to, the people that are between 24 and 50, um, uh, that are maybe looking to move to Laguna Hills, uh, or actually, not even that, uh, in the city of Laguna Hills, maybe because I did a radius, um, that are men and women. One other nice thing about the ad that you didn't have to point out, remember how we put a price or a list price on the website? Well, what actually is really cool is that the website, when the ad is created, will only go to those people that have that say that they have an income that would be comparable to afford this property. So, crazy enough, in a person's Facebook personal profile, people actually put how much they actually earn on their Facebook, or at least a nice range. So if people are disclosing on Facebook their yearly or monthly incomes, now with ads like this, this will go to those people that could possibly qualify to purchase this property. So even better yet, I didn't have to define that. The system automatically defined it for me. Okay. So now a person gets the ad. They can either like the page and move on or – Maybe they're interested in that property, and they click Learn More. Now, when they click Learn More, Facebook immediately vets that person. And what I mean by that, it displays their name as they registered it on Facebook, their email address that Facebook has already uh, checked out by emailing them a confirmation when they created their account, and their phone number. So they have to have all three in order to have a Facebook account. This is all considered accurate because Facebook has already called the phone number to verify or sent a text message to verify that this was an actual number and that they've already sent an email to confirm the person's account. So right now, with doing nothing else, when they click on Learn More and they hit Submit, I am now sent that lead. Okay, so now maybe after a day or two, I've gotten a few push notifications from Rila saying I've gotten some leads from the from my Facebook ad. Now when I go back into my Facebook ad or my Rila account, I can now see how much of my money that I've spent, how many impressions or how many people received this ad. How many people actually clicked on the ad itself, like like or click to look at it, and then actually how many people actually wanted to learn more. So here we see that in one week's time, 
I've spent $55 out of my 100. I've gotten 1,208 leads or impressions. 74 of those 1,200 or 208 cl actually clicked on the ad itself. And seven of those 74 clicks actually want to know more information about the property. Now, down below, those people that clicked, I have their information. Now, because Facebook has already vetted that information for me, I see their phone number, I see their email address, I can now email them, or if I'm doing this on my phone, I can now call them. Now, there is even something even cooler. So we have this list of people here with their phone number and email addresses, right? Well, I use a system called a CRM, like Contactually, or LionDesk, or Top Producer, or Boomtown. I can now go to the filter section, select these people, and export them to a CSV file, which is an Excel spreadsheet, and now I can import that directly into my CRM. So now I can pull those leads from the property website that I'm getting myself and put them directly into my, my CRM, okay? Are there any questions on any of this? Did everybody like uh, today's webinar? A couple of you? Excellent. Well, I know that we went over a ton of information today. Oops, I did get a question here. Yes, thank you. Oh, thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you, Mark. Um, so what I'm doing is uh, this is a recorded webinar. So by the... This time tomorrow, you guys will get a copy of today's webinar. If you miss out on that, please go to my YouTube channel. Uh, go to YouTube.com, type in my name, Tony Breed, and I will also have this webinar displayed there by today, okay? With that said, I hope you guys have a great and wonderful weekend, and I hope you have a great and wonderful day, all right? Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. And webinar.